back to back up in the mix like that? Oh, we're taking it way back today on the channel where it all began, 3D modeling. This is I'm gonna show you everything you need to do your first 3D print uh, of something you made for free. So let's get into it here. We're gonna be using a program called Onshape. It, I believe it works on pretty much any computer. I recommend starting by Googling Onshape Education. This makes sure to bring you to the free uh, educational version of Onshape, which has pretty much everything you need. Uh, I, in fact, I don't even know what it, what it doesn't have. Anyways, it'll bring you to this screen. You can come in here to sign in or sign up. Uh, I think I already have an account. In fact, I know I already have an account. So here we go. All right, there's my username. And uh, luckily, you can't see my password. Sign in. Here we go, okay. There we go, well, you can see we've done a few practice ones. Uh, so right here, this will probably be blank on your screen. Uh, and you can come over here, uh, right here. These, this is kind of where your files are stored. Um, recently opened, created by me, shared with me. If you click on the public, you can see a bunch of ones that people have made and then made public, which are really well done, really cool. Uh, so you can scroll through those, check them out. You can try um, you know, playing with those a little bit and looking at them. Uh, when you're ready to get going, you can click right here on create and create a new document. Let's give it a name. Let's call it a name plate YT for YouTube. Uh, there we go, nameplate YT. Okay, and it's gonna load up the workspace here. Might take a little longer depending on what type of computer you're working with. And here we go, all right, so we're in. Uh, now just a quick tour before we start making stuff. You can see right here is your area to kind of, um, to actually build your 3D model. Over here, this is called the view cube and this controls what view you're looking at, right? So if you wanna go and zoom over the top and look down, you can click right here on the top and look down like that. If you want to uh, see the top front and right, you can click on the diagonal of the view cube. If you wanna see straight on the front, right? You can also use these arrows to rotate and uh, view different angles. You can use these to rotate it, All right? So mess around with that a little bit. You can also click right here. If you go to isometric, you can get a nice top front right view right there. Okay, uh, so anyways, let's get started. Let's start with a sketch. So we're gonna click this sketch button, create new sketch in the upper left-hand corner. And uh, there we go, that pops up. Okay, so sketch plane. Now we're going to leave this dialog box open as long as we're actively editing the sketch. And when we, if we click check, it's going to kind of close out and lock up the sketch. So leave that open for now. Uh, the first thing you have to do is select a sketch, a sketch plane. So where do we want to make this sketch? Do we want to go on the front, the right, the top? I'm going to choose the top plane right here. And there you go, you can see the sketch uh, up here in our toolbar, our tools change to the sketching tools instead of the 3D modeling tools. So we'll click right here on the top so that we're looking head on at our sketch and now we can get going. All right, so here we go. Let's start by drawing our rectangle. Uh, the corner rectangle is good and I'm just gonna draw it right about like that. Um, let's go eight inches or so, eight. And then I'm actually, based on past experiences, I'm gonna make it a little narrower. We'll go eight inches by two inches roughly. Now let's talk a little bit about dimensioning and units. Uh, for most 3D printers, I believe the units are typically in millimeters. Now you can really work in whatever unit you want, I believe, and at the end you can just export in millimeters, but you know, I don't know, sometimes I just like working in millimeters just to make sure I'm kind of like designing everything, keeping everything consistent um, for the 3D printer. Uh, so if you wanna change your units, you can come right here onto this three, the document menu right here, these three lines, and you can drag down to workspace units, and you can change this uh, right here. Where is it? The default length inch. Uh, I can change that to millimeter if I want to, which I do. Okay, and there we go. Oops. Now we can click the green check mark. Now you can see that our, our sketch went away and our tools, our 3D modeling tools came back. Uh, so we need to rectify that. You can see sketch one is right there. If I right click, so two finger click with the trackpad, or you can right click with your mouse uh, and we're, we can rename it and we can edit it. So let's rename it real quick and let's just choose uh, base like that. Okay. 
and uh, we'll click the green check mark and then we'll click again, we'll right click again and we'll go to edit. Okay, so there we go. Now let's grab the dimension tool. I'm gonna grab the dimension tool right here and click on a line that I wanna dimension. Now, uh, I believe this one was about eight inches. So let's just go with a nice round 200 uh, millimeters right there. And let's dimension this side of it right there. And we'll go to a nice round 50. So we've got a four to one ratio here, uh, 50 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Okay, we'll click the green check mark. And there we go, we've got our base rectangle. Now, uh, we're done editing the sketch. We've got the 3D modeling tools. We're gonna choose this one right here, the extrude. So we're gonna see what the extrude does here in just a sec. It's pretty awesome. I'm actually gonna select an isometric view. I'm either gonna click there or click on the rectangle so I can kind of see this in a more three-dimensional view so we can see what the extrude does. Now there's several options here on the extrude. New, add, remove, intersect. We're gonna, about, we're gonna learn about new adding and removing right here in this video. Um, and may, perhaps in the future we can try some intersections. Um, so for right now, since this is the first piece, we're going to be creating something new. So we wanna have that one selected. We're gonna choose the rectangle that we want selected. And now you can drag this ar arrow up and down to get the thickness that you want. Or you can come right here and type this in. Let's go with uh, let's go with 12 millimeters thick right there. Hit enter and you can see what it looks like. When everything's set up the way you want it on this menu, click the green check mark and there you go. We've gone from uh, 2D to 3D by extruding. Okay, so onwards here. Uh, okay, what else are we gonna do? Let's see, so now we're making a nameplate, right? So we're going to need to add some letters then we're gonna also extrude the letters. Let's add a few letters. We're gonna need a new sketch. So let's click on the sketch. And uh, again, it wants us to choose a plane. So like we did last time, we can choose any of these planes again. But what's really powerful and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to choose to sketch directly onto the top face of my rectangular surface here. Let's click on that right there. We're sketching right on the top face there. And um, <clears throat> okay, again, let's click on that top so we can zoom in and see what we're doing. Okay, now let's grab the, uh, the text tool and let's draw ourselves a rectangle right there. And uh, in the text, I'm gonna say Mr. Stem and then I'm gonna choose to uh, bold it. And uh, we can also change the font here. I, uh, I haven't actually played with this really. Um, you know, okay, that looks fine. All right, so let's click the green check mark and there you go. It actually it got really big. It expands bigger than the page is um, or bigger than the rectangle is. So we're gonna rein that in here a little bit using the dimension tool. So the cool thing about this is if we change the size of this rectangle, then that will change the size of our font for us. So let's click on that. So right now it's 257, the entire plate is 200. So let's go a little less than that. Let's try, uh, let's go with 170, or maybe maybe we'll do 160. Give us a little more room. There we go, so you can see it shrunk down a little bit, and uh, there we go, okay. So let's, um, let's hit escape to get out of the dimension tool, and um, <clears throat> let's see. I think we, we want to move this right, and we want this to be centered on our plate. Now we can click on a corner, and we can drag this around, and we can kind of approximately do it, right? But eventually we're gonna to wanna to make it, make sure it's precise. So we're gonna use this technique right here. We're gonna, we, we could dimension it, right? And we could click dimension here and we could click on there and we could get the distance in between those, do some math and kind of figure out what that dimension needs to be. But I think actually what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna draw some lines and I'm gonna use something called an equal constraint. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna draw a line from there to there and then I'm gonna hit escape and then I'm gonna click on the line tool again and I'm gonna draw another line from there to there. Whoops, did we get it? Okay, there we go, hit escape. Now we have two lines drawn, right? Now if these two lines were identical in length, then that would, make sh that, that would mean that the words were centered vertically. So let's see, let's click right here on the equal constraint, make sure to select that and then click on one line and the other line. And did it work? One line and the other line. Okay, I think it was so centered that it barely had to move at all. 
Uh, that should be good. Let's click escape and let's repeat this process in the horizontal direction. Okay. And we'll do it again uh, over here. Draw some lines. Okay. And now let's use that equal constraint again and see if we can move it. There we go. Make sure that one is equal to that one. And there, that time you could see it jump just a little bit. Let me show you guys the back button. If you click back, make sure not to click back on your browser. Otherwise it goes and it exits the whole uh, workspace and it's annoying. You have to, It saves everything automatically, which is really nice. So you don't need to worry about that. But you do have to reload the whole thing. So this is your back button right there. You can see it move and we can go forward again. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so we've got it centered. Let's do one last extrusion and then we'll export this and it'll be ready for 3D printing. Uh, so, okay, again, let's go into our isometric view and let's click on the extrude button and let's choose the thing we want to extrude, which is the letters. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, I promised we would talk about adding and removing. So this time, since we're not starting a new part, right, we're kind of building on to something that already exists, we're going to use the add or we can click on the remove and we can slice it, we can remove material instead of adding on. So you can decide, do you want your nameplate to be popping out or do you want it to be cutting in? I think I'll go with the add option here, but that is way too tall. We need to tone it down a little bit. Let's take it down to there. Okay, four millimeters, that should be about good. Um, and uh, we'll click check right there. Okay, we've got extrusion two. Now notice my sketches, my base sketch, my, be kind of, it's grayed out now it became invisible. Uh, that's because it's become a part of extrude one. And sketch one is now grayed out. You can't see the sketch. You can only see the extrusion there. Okay, so there we go. We've got our nameplate. Now let's export this for 3D printing. Uh, if we come down here, right where it says part studio one, and uh, we right click, you can see some options come up. Delete, open a new browser, rename properties, uh, and the very last one is export. And that's the one we're gonna wanna choose right there. Now uh, you can choose your file name. Let's call it name plate YT. Uh, the format is STL. STL is what we're gonna use for most 3D printers. Right here, units, again, millimeters typically, typically what you want, um, depending on your 3D printer and what you have set up there. And there we go, you can click okay and there you go. It starts a download for you and that's it. You can load that up into your 3D printing software and uh, you should be good to go. Okay. Thanks for watching this tutorial. More coming shortly. See you in the next video.